in, all right? Woo! One, two, three, four. The power of love is a curious thing. Woo! Make a mom man leave, make a mom man sing. Woo! Make a heart a little white dove. We got the script. Except you have to sing your line. I know. <laughs> you us. We're going to have them narrate. How's that sound? Oh, my God. This is fantastic. All right. You figured it out. We're doing Back to the Future. Yeah. That was not loud enough for that. and it's over a million that have seen the Star Wars video. You know how this works. Those of you that haven't, get online. We have the script. It's not the exact script, but it's close. We're, we took a few scenes from the movie. I'm gonna tell these guys what character to be, and they're gonna read those lines as that character, and we're gonna change it and make it fun. All right, there might be some audience participation too in who we're gonna do, so be ready for that. This won't end well. <laughs> I just know now. All right, we're gonna start this out. Let's see. Um, I don't want to tell you what's seen yet. Okay, ready? Basically, all right. Um, Marty, I invented a time machine. It's a DeLorean. Holy cow, Doc, really? A time machine? Okay, 1.21 gigawatts. Wow, wait, 88 miles an hour. Whoa! It's 1955. All right, <laughs> here we go. We're in 1955, and we are coming into the diner. And we have Lou, played by Mr. Weed. Okay. We have Marty, played by Austin Powers. Oh, behave. <laughs> Yeah. We have George, played by Stimpy. And we have Biff, played by C-3PO. <laughs> and we want to narrate this. What? You want to do a voice? You got a good one for us? Sure, I'll, I'll try. See, enjoy anything. What do you think? All right, surprises. Okay. Right. Everyone, now you got to be excited. If you're not loud, I'll stop this whole thing. <laughs> All right, start on, start on the first page and just go with it. I'll go for it. All right. Let's see. A record store displays the latest records and albums, Eddie Fisher, Perry Como, Pat Boone, and there's no rock and roll. Marty walks along Thai Street staring at places and people. The people stare at him too, particularly his green shoes. <laughs> the previously bought and up cafe is now open for business. Marty notices public telephone sign on the window. He's got an idea. He enters. Marty stares at the signs advertising menus. Hamburger 25 cents. Ham and cheese 30 cents. Chocolate sundae 15 cents. A sign over the cigarette display says all brands 20 cents. Lou, the counterman, spots Marty. Looking for something bitter? I mean, kid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby, the telephone. <laughs> Lou points out in back a phone booth. Marty goes into the phone booth and flips through the directory. Uh, flipping. Not my <laughs> day. <laughs> Marty's finger comes to rest at Brown, Emmett L, Scientist, 1640, Riverside Drive, Hillside, 34385. <laughs> Marty digs out a nickel and dials the number. It rings, it rings, it rings. No answer. He hangs up. Oh. Not my day again. <laughs> he rips the page out. <laughs> <laughs> Marty takes the seat at the counter. A nerdy looking kid is seated nearby, sipping a soda, reading a comic book. Marty looks at Lou, indicating the address on the phone book page. Now, baby, can you sell me the 1640 Riverside? <laughs> you want to order something, kid? <laughs> Yeah, baby. You give me a Pepsi free, man. Kid, if you want a Pepsi, you got to pay for it. <laughs> no, no, 
don't know, baby. The Pepsi Free, you know, <laughs> diet soda. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, well. Just give me something to drink that doesn't have sugar in it. Lou gives him a look, then puts a cu cup of coffee in front of him. Mahati looks at the bowl of sugar cubes in front of him. If you got me sweet and low, man. Sweet and what? I <laughs> <laughs> suspiciously. Oh, <clears throat> thank you. You better pay for this right now. Okay. He pulls out his wallet and gives Lou a crisp new $20 bill. Lou's eyes nearly fall out of his head. Ay, mis ojos, a 20? <laughs> what do you think this is, a bank? I can't break a 20 for a nickel cup of coffee. Hey, say, what's a kid your age doing with a $20 bill anyway? <laughs> Marty comes, pulls a nickel out of his pocket, and takes back his 20. Lou gives him a look, then walks away. Marty raises his coffee cup, and just as he's about to take a sip, Oh, I say, Mr. McFly. <laughs> Uh, yeah, huh? He spins around on his stool. The voice came from a punk. Coming right toward Marty. No, he's stepping over to the nerdy kid next to him. Uh, hi, Dev. How's it going? <laughs> who did that? I did. I didn't know who was I have a jump. We're into this for, what, 48 seconds? Can you get <laughs> up right now? I don't know. It was a Nice silence. to go. Thank you. Hey, if you want to come in, come in. Close the door. If yeah. you're not in, you're out. Yeah. Close the door. Yeah, do it today. See? This is private. <laughs> All right. Continuing on. Um, can I do that? Your best, yes. Sorry, Carlos. I was looking at it, too. <laughs> oh, as soon as I pick this gray kitty off my ass, I'll lose <laughs> 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 you. Dude, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> George. Secret George. I'm Biff. George. We're on George. 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 Well, no, I figured since it's not due till Monday, knocks on George's head. Hello, is anyone home? It's Faith McFly, Faith. Do you copy this? Do you realize what would happen if I turned in my homework in your handwriting? <laughs> You've noticed this bloody stare at her. Why, I'd be kicked out of school, turned into goodness what? <laughs> By the way, what are you looking at, dipshit? <laughs> Hey, Biff, get a load of his shoes. This dog thinks he's a leprechaun. He's painted him green. They all laugh. Biff turns back to George. So, how about my homework, McFly? <laughs> uh, okay, Biff, I'll do it tonight, and I'll bring it over first thing tomorrow. <laughs> Not too early. I sleep in on Sundays. Maintenance, you know. Oh, oh by the way, McFly, your shoe's untied. Oh, dear. Huh? <clears throat> <laughs> Biff hits him in the chin, and they all laugh. And they leave. Marty stills in disbelief turns to George. I don't believe it. Shaggy Delic, baby. You're George McFly? Uh huh. Well, your birthday's August 18th, and your mother's name is Sylvia? Uh huh. Who are you? Well, I'm a very distant relative of yours. Distant, I say. And see. Hey! Let's, hey, Bob, you gonna hang out with us longer? Yeah, sure, if you want. <laughs> you guys want him to hang out? Was that good? <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, guys. We're gonna continue on. The next scene, Goldie. Okay. We'll do the Taco Bell, though. Okay. There's <laughs> Goldie. George. George. Who's George? We got Lou. Lou is Morgan Freeman. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we for George. Marty is Christopher Walken. Yeah. 
Yeah. Lorraine Jackie is Puppet. Tony Soprano. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want to narrate when we want to do another voice? We'll never get to what you're asking you for, I guarantee you. <laughs> what are you asking for? You want a Jackie Puppet. Oh yeah, no, not yet. <laughs> uh, and that's going to be it. We have a, a George and a Stella too. I can't believe I don't write down who's going to be George and Stella. Well, since I did them in the first act. You want to keep doing them? Why not? No, they're not. Otherwise, oh, yeah. it sits here and Stella's dies. one line. Stella's one line. We'll just throw, I'll, 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 I'll yell. Stella. All right, Stella. All right. <laughs> Everyone have their parts, their pieces? Yeah. Who am I doing? You are going to be Tony Soprano and Lorraine. <laughs> and you can narrate and whatever, go for it. Whatever you can do this. All right, ready? And <laughs> scene. A black bus boy has been sweeping in the background, making his way home. <laughs> he looks at George, he talks, he be see, he has a gold front too. It's Goldie Wilson, age 22. <laughs> Say, what do you let that boy push you around for? <laughs> Look. Just fuck, you know, uh, he's bigger than me. Okay. You, should, you need therapy. Stand tall, boy. Have some respect for yourself. You let people walk all over you, you know, they'll be walking all over you for the rest of your life. Look at me. What? You think I'm going to spend the rest of my life in this slop house? And what's it now, Goldie? <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. You know, I'm going to make, I'm going to make something of myself. I'm going to go to night school. I'm going to be somebody. That's right. He's going to be mad someday. <laughs> oh, mayor. That's a good idea. I could run for mayor. Well, that's funny. A colored mayor. <laughs> I will get my Shawshank Redemption. You wait and see, Mr. <laughs> I'm gonna be your mayor. Yeah, when well, you just keep driving that old white lady around, <laughs> Oh, no nourish. <clears throat> I like the sound of that. You kiddo, Mayor Golden Wilson. <laughs> I like the sound of that. <laughs> Left. He goes out after him. Okay. <laughs> now Martin notices that George has left. He goes out after him. <laughs> oh, I'll do it again. Mayor Goldie Wilson. I like the sound of that. Deja vu. <laughs> Martin looks around and sees that George is bicycling down the street. <laughs> George. Hey, hey, George. I. I want to talk to you. <laughs> but George doesn't hear him. He disappears around the corner. Marty runs after him. Running. <laughs> Running. <laughs> Marty comes from around the corner and sees George Spike parked underneath a tree. Marty looks around and spots George up on a tree, precariously out on a branch overhanging the street. About 12 feet up, George has a pair of binoculars trained on a second story window in a house across the street. Marty watches in disbelief as he realizes that what George is doing. Wow. <laughs> He's a peeping dog. <laughs> George tries to move closer but notices his balance. He tumbles into the street. Marty watches as George groans, then slowly tries to get up. Now a car comes from around the corner. Whoa. Hey, Dad, look out. <laughs> George is still dazed. Marty dashes into the street and a spectacular flying leap knocks him out as the path of the oncoming car. As Marty moves to avoid the car, the car swerves in the same direction. Now, this is a screech of the brakes and then the car hits Marty. George grabs his bike and pedals off, leaving Marty lying in the street unconscious. Marty is lying in bed. Female hands place a cold compress on his bruised forehead. Marty groans and stirs. Oh, Mom, is that you? Shh, everything's gonna be okay. <laughs> <laughs> By the 
way, do the dots on his dress go with these heels? <laughs> it sounds like his mother. He opens his eyes. All he can see is a silhouette. Wow, beautiful. Oh God, what a horrible nightmare. I dreamt I went back in time. Way back in time. <laughs> sure, sure, just take it easy now, because you're the biggest pussy I ever met in my life. <laughs> You've been asleep for nine fucking hours. <laughs> And you're a cantaloupe. <laughs> Mommy, it was terrible. It was a terrible place to be. Music, awful. Didn't have rock and roll. Cars, ugly. My neighborhood hadn't been built yet and everything was so weird looking it made me want to masturbate. <laughs> Well, just listen, you're safe and sound, okay? Back, back where you were, huh? In good old 1955. Even the Bayer Bing wasn't built then. <laughs> 1955? <laughs> she turns on the bedside lamp. It's the same girl George was spying on, and Marty recognizes her. Oh my god. You're... You're my... My... My name's uh, Lorraine. Lorraine Bracco. I mean, Baines. <laughs> <laughs> Marty stares at her for a long moment. But... You're so thin. <laughs> oh, just relax, Calvin. Take it easy. You got quite a bruise on your head. <laughs> Marty looks under the blankets. Uh oh, where are my pants? <laughs> uh, over there on the chair. Notices uh, the color of his underwear. Yeah, I noticed the color of his underwear. I never seen red underwear before, Calvin. Marty covers himself up. Uh, Calvin, why are you calling me? Calvin! Wasn't that your name? Calvin Klein? It's written in your underwear. <laughs> oh, I guess people call you Cal. Uh, no, well, actually people call me Marty. Well, after much deliberation, I'm pleased to meet you, Marty. <laughs> she comes over and sits on the bed right next to him. You mind if I sit here? Uh, no, uncomfortable moment, not feeling good. Help, someone is touching. She's, it's up. <laughs> Marty moves as far away as he can without falling off the bed. He holds his blanket tight around his waist. She looks at him fascinated. Well, oh, that is quite a bruise there. Yeah. It reminds me uh, of, uh, you know, one of the guys in the gang that met a horrible accident at the golf course, you know. Yeah. He had some bruises. He died of them. Oh. You can tell I'm wet because I'm doing all the talking. Yeah. <laughs> she gently strokes through his bruised forehead and then runs her hand to his hair. Marty moves even further and falls off the bed. He covers himself with the blankets. Lorraine, are you up there? <laughs> we hear footsteps coming from upstairs. It's my mother. Quick, put your pants back on. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy that? Yeah. Yeah. I need to thank you for walking in Tony Soprano at a moment. <laughs> All right, moving Far on. Long overdue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on quickly. Let's see. Next scene. We have Marty. Marty's going to be played by Yoda. <laughs> we have uh, Sam. Sam's going to be played by Rocco. We have Lorraine being played by Elmer Fudd. <laughs> we have Stella being played by Porky Pig. <laughs> Who does that? That would be you. Well, did anybody tell Bob Bergen? Yeah, yeah. Don't tell him. Don't tell him. Okay? Don't tell him. I'll we'll, do it for today. We won't say anything. Yeah, don't say nothing. All right. And uh, we have, oh, we have Milton, too. You guys ever heard of Ryden? Seriously? <laughs> all right. When you hear the voice, you're all going to go, oh. <laughs> All right, Ryan, and you're going to do Milton. Porky Pig is Stella. Marty is Yoda. Lorraine is Elmer. Sam is Rocco. Milton, do Ryan. It's only a couple lines. And who's going to announce this time? We got another voice in there somewhere? You, what do you think? I'll just okay, keep throwing it. All right, I'll just keep, I'll just keep throwing it out. Is it okay if he has fun? Is he doing good? All right, we'll keep running. You guys. Everyone ready? Characters ready? All right, let's uh, end scene. Marty takes her seat at the dinner table next to Lorraine and Mrs. Stella Vage, Forty and Brendan. Makes the introduction to the kids. The chair at the head of the table is empty. 
Men det er det, 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 det smager en øl, nævn. En vats asse. Det er asse, asse, asse. Og vats, det er det, 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 No thanks, Mom. <laughs> now drop Sam Bay's 45 rolls in a brand new television on a plywood dolly of his own construction. Look at this, it rolls. Now we can watch Jackie Gleason while we eat. <laughs> Sam fiddles with the rabbit ears and brings in a rather muddy image of a cigarette commercial on TV. After facing the tension of doing three lung operations in a row, I like to relax by lighting up a Sir Randolph. I know its fine tobacco taste will soothe my nerves and improve my circulation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at that picture, crystal clear. Why would anybody want to go to the movies when you can see this in your own home for free? <laughs> wow, our first television set. Dad picked it up today. Do you have a television? <clears throat> There's two of them. We are. <laughs> wow, he must be rich. Milton, he's teasing you. Nobody has two televisions. Big screens. <laughs> <laughs> the Hunting Runners has resumed the classic Man from Space episode. Hmm, see this one I have. A good one it is. This is where Ralph dresses up as the Man from Space. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you've seen it? It's brand new. From Metal Gear. <laughs> oh, you got it, what? On a rerun it was. What's a rerun? <laughs> Find out. You will. <laughs> Quiet! I want to hear this. Me and Marty, I'd like to give, uh, give, give your mother a call and, and let her know that you, uh, you're, uh, you're, uh, you're, uh, you're all right. You're okay. Um, well, uh, no. You cannot. <laughs> we, 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 why not? Mm, I've got some cheers with my dad. Um, please, tell me where Riverside Drive is. Oh, uh, Riverside? Oh, uh, sure. It's on the east side of town, just past a lot of comics, and a block past Mr. Bighead's house on Maple. <laughs> the Bighead's house? But on Kennedy Drive, that is. Uh, pardon me? John F. Kennedy Drive, yes. Who in the world is John F. Kennedy? <laughs> Always in motion. The future is. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> oh, Mama, with Marty's parents out of town, don't you think he should spend the night here? I'd hate for anything to happen to him with that bruise on his head. <laughs> <laughs> She gives him a flirtatious smile. Oh. <laughs> Marty, Lorraine is right. You must be stay over the night. You're our responsibility in our charge. <laughs> sure, I am not. How old are you again? <clears throat> okay. <laughs> and he can sweep in my womb. <laughs> Under the table, Lorraine puts her hand on Marty's leg. Marty immediately jumps to his feet. Um, actually, got to be going, I must. Uh, thank you for everything, and see you all later. Much later. In a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> Yeah. 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 All right, Jeff.
just so I can preface this, the next like four pages are just Marty and Clark Brown. So I split it. We're going to have the first half of the scene with these two gentlemen, the second half with these. So we're going to have Doc Brown play. We're going to bring back Morgan Freeman for Doc Brown. <laughs> and for Marty, we're going to have Crocker. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, narrating. Hey, can you do any funny voices? Does everyone know Fat Bastard? In how do we? You want to hear that? Yeah! Fat Bastard it is. You're still under 18 in the room, right? Wait a minute. I see someone back there. Is there someone under 18 in this room? No. All right. We didn't see him. All right. We're going to run this. We're going to try this out. We'll see how it goes. All right. Ready? And scene. Marty ogles as he wakes up to the front door. He checks the address against the page he ripped out of the phone book. It checks. It's answered Doc Brown, age 35. Brown is dressed in an evening clothes. Hi, the kid. Looking for somebody. <laughs> Dr. Brown? Yes, your skin is brown, it must be. Yes! Come on, Dr. Brown! Boy, am I glad to see you! See you today, home. I know you can. Do well, not exactly. Buried! <laughs> that is not yet. Uh, my name's uh, Marty. Marty McFly. Uh, now what I'm about to say is going to sound incredible, and you're the only man on earth who will believe it. I'm from the future. Buried! <laughs> Great sales pitch, kid. That's terrific. So what do you sell it? Penguin wax or documentaries or something? No, limo driver! I'm serious! You've got to believe me. You're the only one who can get me back home. Get you back home? Heck, I drive into your neighborhood, they're going to arrest my ass. <laughs> Kid, I think you got me confused with the Wizard of Oz. No, no, look at the money in the box by a wall. Look! I can prove I'm from 1985. Marty pulls out his wallet and starts showing the contents to Brown. See this? My driver's license expires 1987. Damn you, mother. Look at my birth dates. I haven't even been born yet. $20 bill. Look at this money. Series 1981. Here's a picture of me, my sister, and my brother. Not fairies. Look at her sweatshirt. It says class of 84. Oh. Alan gives it all a cursory look, particularly the snapshot. Oh, I get it. You're selling trick film. That's great. It really looks like the guy's got no head. Very clever. What the hell? Huh? Alan hands it back to Marty. Marty looks at it. Sure enough, the image of Dave in the photo was no head. Marty stares at it, unable to figure it out. Look, kid, I'd buy a roll, but I'm not much of a photographer. No! Dr. Brown, this is no trick. It's not the work of fairies. I really am from the future. That's Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> well then, tell me something, young man from the future. Who's the president of the United States in 1985? Nancy Reagan. I mean, Ronald. Brown bursts out laughing. Well, that's a good one. This kid's a riot. A regular riot. Look, here's five bucks, kid. Thanks for the laughs. Now get out. Yes, Marty Five then closes the door. All right, we'll stop right there. We'll switch it up now. <laughs> All right, for Doc Brown in this scene, we're going to have Ren. <laughs> And uh, there's also an old Doc Brown, so when he's old, he'll be old Ren. Okay. Okay. <laughs> For Marty, you guys decide. Do you want to hear <coughs> Nicolas Cage <laughs> or Paul McCartney? Paul Do you want to hear Cage scream? Do you want to hear McCartney scream? <laughs> Okay, no. <laughs> Nicholas McCartney. Do you want to switch back and forth? Go ahead. <laughs> Who do you want to narrate as this time? Do you want to, you guys want Fat Bastard to stay? No. no. Someone else? Somebody else? Who else? 
Do you do something else? How about else? Brown is hunched over his workbench, furiously scooping down notes and plans. He's disheveled. He's been here for a while. Brown's dog is sitting near to bed. The name of the dog is Einstein. Marty appears at a partially open window. He opens it the rest of the way and climbs in. Dog, listen. You gotta hear me out, man. I mean, I know my forehead's huge, but focus on my eyes. Get lost, kid. I'm working! I know. And I know what you're doing. You're inventing time travel. It came to you in a vision when you slipped and fell in the tub. And that thing you're drawing, no, not that X-rated thing, the other thing, that's the flux capacitor. Brown is totally astonished. My God! How did you know that? <laughs> I told you! I'm from the future! <laughs> With that, he walks over to the garage door and raises the overhead door, revealing the DeLorean sitting there in the driveway. Brown's mouth falls open as he stares at it, and the mechanism visible through the open gull wing door. He grabs the drawing he's been doing working on for Rosen with the DeLorean to compare it. It's drawing of the flux capacitor. It matches the real thing perfectly. The DeLorean is now in the garage. The garage is door closed. The 1985 suitcase is open, and we can see its contents. Clothes, toilet articles, and con air. Hair dryer. <laughs> Marty is busily attaching the video cabinet to 1953 model TV. Yesterday. Okay, Zop. Hey, take a look at this. Brown comes over and Marty rolls the tape he shot in the mall parking lot, where Brown is explaining the operation of the time machine. <clears throat> Why? It's me! It's me! It's me! It's me! Turn it on, man. Incredible. Thank God I still got my hair. Bug this runs in my family, you know. But what on earth am I wearing? Well, it looks like a beetle suit. <laughs> well, it's a radiation suit. Of course! Because all of the fallout from the atomic wars. And what's that thing around my neck? Indian jewelry. I'm not even gonna ask. <laughs> Yoko gave it to you as a gift. <laughs> the part of the tape comes up about the plutonium. We see the image of the plutonium canister with old Doc Brown next to it. Plutonium? You mean the sucker's nuclear? It's electrical, but I need a nuclear reaction to generate 1.21 gigawatts of electricity I need. <laughs> Young Brown is taken aback. 121 gigawatts? Gigawatts? Kid, you're out of gas? You're going no place fast! Huh? Look, I'm sure that in 1985, plutonium is available in any corner drugstore, but in 1955, it's a little hard to come by! And unless you figure out on driving into a nuclear blast test site while an A-bomb's going off, I'm afraid you're stuck here. But isn't there some other way to generate that kind of power, like tap into a yellow submarine? <laughs> 1.21 gigawatt?! Oh, sure. We can tie into Hoover Dam with a very long cable. Or we can build turbine on the back of this thing, and you can drive it over Niagara Falls. Or you can drive across the country at 88 miles an hour and hope you, hope you get struck by a bolt of lightning. Lightning? Hi there. Hold the phone door. Check this out. <laughs> Monty pulls out the Save the Clock Tower flyer from his pocket. It includes a photocopy of a newspaper article dated March 27, 1955. The headline, Clock Tower Struck by Lightning, Clock Stopped at 10.02. Back to the shot. Brown reads it, nodding. He's getting an idea. Kid, if this is true, we might just be able to get your ass back to the future! 
It's totally insane. But it's certainly no crazier than building a nuclear reactor onto a bag of a car. According to this, we know the exact moment lightning will strike a specific spot at 10.02 p.m. and 11 seconds of the next second day. All I have to do is rig up a conducting system that'll channel the lightning directly into the flux capacitor. That's a nice word, lots of F's and little X's. And... <laughs> as long as you're doing 88 miles an hour, when it happens, you see you later, alligator! But, but, oh, oh, I'm sorry. But Marty isn't paying attention. He's looking at the snapshot again, and he's quite concerned. What's wrong, kid? I don't know! <laughs> Something weird is going on with this picture. My brother, he's fading out. Let me see that. Oh. Brown studies it. He, oh. he too reacts with concern. <laughs> Indeed, more of Dave has faded away. His neck is gone along with a part of his shoulders. It looks like he's being erased or something. Erased from existence, kid. We gotta get you some new clothes! Yeah. What? Let's <laughs> see. All right. Next scene. Let's see. Let's bring for Mr. Strickland. We'll do Timon. Or um, let's see here. For Doc Brown, how about Fry? Woo! <laughs> they know that voice. Um, for Lorraine, Sean Connery. Oh, yes. Um, let's see here. For Marty, Mike Wazowski. Mike Wazowski. Yes. <laughs> and you know, I, I don't care what anyone thinks. I think it's so cool that you do the voice of the monorail system. It's you know, everybody knows that voice. Do you do the Spanish part too? Uh, no, no, I don't. Oh, it. All right, we're gonna have you narrate in the Disney monorail voice. <laughs> that one's selfish, so leave me alone. Hey, Bob, do you do any imitations? Uh, let's see. Uh, Peter Griffin. Peter Griffin. Peter Griffin. Peter Griffin. All right, how about Peter Griffin? Everyone know that guy? Yeah. George has a couple of minutes, and we'll do Peter Griffin for George. For George, you got it. Oh, yeah. All right, everybody ready? All right, and see. 72, yeah. Marty is now dressed in total 1950. <laughs> <laughs> Marty is unsure and confused as he comes to him. Ah, I can't get away from Disney! Are you sure about this, Sully? Well, figure it out, kid. Your old man was supposed to get hit by your grandpa's car, not you. Therefore, you interfered in your parents' first meeting. If they don't meet, and they don't fall in love, if they don't fall in love, they don't get married. And if they don't get married, they don't have any kids. That's why your older brother's fading out. He's being erased from existence. He's first since he's the oldest. Your sister will be next, and then you. And unless you repair the damage by getting your folks back together, and once you introduce them to each other, nature will take its course. I hope. Marty pauses to check his report. <laughs> <laughs> he comes back and slip down here on the duct table. I can't believe you actually put this crap in your hand. Oh, come on, kid, let's get it over with. Brown pulls it inside. <laughs> for the next class, holding the handrail all the way. <laughs> his shirt tail is out, his hair is poorly combed, and papers are practically falling out of his three-ring binder. Marty and Dr. Brown watch from down the hall. It's a binder full of women. <laughs> Let's see, excluding 47% of the cars I see. <laughs> That's him! 
As right George, there! As George walks down the hall, students laugh at him behind his back, and some voice kick him in the toughness. <laughs> George turns. He has a kick me sign on his collar. Doc Brown shakes his head at this pathetic sight. Are you sure you're not adopted? Now a hand yanks George by the arm. Akuna Matata McFly! <laughs> Shape up, man! He pulls the sign off George's shirt and places it in a nearby receptacle. <laughs> you see? You're a slacker. Do you want to be a slacker the rest of your life like Pumpa? <laughs> George shakes his head. Marty and Brown look down the hall in the opposite direction where Lorraine is at her locker, giggling with a girlfriend. Looks like a match made in heaven. Uh, my mom's always said it was meant to be. I sure hope she's right. Marty takes a deep breath and starts walking toward George at a reasonable safe pace. <laughs> Careful not to slip. Hold the rail. Hey, buddy! You're just the guy I wanted to see. You remember me from Saturday? I said you might, remember? Oh, yeah. Listen, there's somebody I want you to meet. Come here! Uh, excuse me, Lorraine. Calvin, I'm a Marty. She's so delighted to see Marty, she drops her books. Oh, yeah. let me get those. I'm not looking up your dress. So he picks up her books and gives them back to her. She's totally infatuated. <laughs> it's not a dress, you ass. It's a kilt. <laughs> and you're not a girl. But that's anyway for looking. Lorraine, or Larry, or whatever you want to be called, I want to introduce you to someone. This is my good friend, George McFly. George? This is Lorraine. Hi, it's really a pleasure to meet you. Lorraine has to pay George the slightest bit of attention. She's looking to see if this is the Epcot stop. <laughs> oh, Junior. I mean, Marty. I was so worried about you your running off like that the other night with that bruise on your head. It's all right. Uh, yeah, it's not from a human baby named Boo or anything, so, uh, yeah. The bell rings. I'm late, and I'll feel you later. She hurries off the hall, joining her girlfriend, and they pass by Doc Brown. Isn't he a dreamboat? <laughs> George has run off in the opposite direction. Marty stands in the middle of the hall, completely bewildered, blocking traffic in both directions. <laughs> Obviously, you being in the picture is a real distraction for her. You gotta get him to ask her out on a date so they can be alone together. A date? What kind of date? I don't know what the kids do in the 50s. What do they do in the 80s? Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. <laughs> uh, no comment? Brown notices a hand-painted banner in the hall announcing the Enchantment Under the Sea dance this Saturday night. Well, look, there's a dance coming up. Get him to take her to that. Oh, that's right! Enchantment under the sea! They're supposed to go to that dance! That's why they came for the first time, Sully! Well then, kids, you gotta make sure they go to that dance. Together. And sing. <laughs> Mr. Weed? That's a crowd question. Yeah. They told us we should stay till 2. I mean, sorry, 2.30. Steve said they were going to move the concert to a place so we could stay. Maybe Steve doesn't have as much power as he Alright, find out. We're going to set up the next scene and see what happens. Alright, we might get thrown out. We'll figure it out in a minute. Alright, we're going to do Marty as Zoidberg. Alright, for, for Biff, do you want to hear Mr. Weed or 
Crocker? Crocker! There you go, Crocker is now dead. For George, how about, you want to hear Axel? Yeah! Yeah! Axel is now George. And for Lorraine, Tom, you could be anyone you want. Who would it be? Uh, him. <laughs> yes, it is. How about we have Bob? You want to narrate again? Sure. Right on. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You can do it. At any request for the narrator? Any uh, request? Arnold Schwarzenegger. A Bostonian, the lady from the beginning. All right, you're the lady from the beginning. And if by chance they throw us out, I'll throw my hands up and throw you all out. All right, let's just run with it. Ready? Sing. George is seated at a table, having lunch and writing furiously. He has a copy of Amazing Stories in Science Fiction Magazine with his books. Marty comes over and sits down next to him. Hello, George. <laughs> Why are you rhyming? <laughs> stories. <laughs> really? What kind of stories? Science fiction stories about space travel and Roxas. <laughs> visitors from other planets coming to Earth. I never knew you did anything creative. Wait, how about letting me read one of them? <laughs> Why not Zoidberg? <laughs> oh no. I never let anybody read my stories, especially Zoidberg. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh. What if they didn't like him? What if they told me I was no good? I couldn't take that kind of rejection. My father's always telling me that if I never let anyone read my work, I'll have no future as a writer. I know he's right, but I guess that's just the way I am. <laughs> this must be pretty hard for you to understand, huh? No, George, it's not that hard at all, because it's not claw plot. <laughs> it's a long moment as Marty looks at George in a new light and sees himself. <laughs> Oh, so sorry. I, I, my tongue was in front of my eye teeth and I couldn't see what I was saying. Listen, George, you know that girl I introduced to you, Lorraine? She really likes you. And I think you should ask her to the Enchantment Under the Sea dance. I think you'll have a great time with her. <laughs> well, I really couldn't ask her. Why not? What if she says no? <laughs> I'd hate to be rejected. George, I'm telling you, if you don't ask Lorraine to that dance, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. And I'm going to regret it for the rest of mine. Well, it's not like I don't want to. It's just that I kind of think she'd rather go out with somebody else. Who? Oh. Roxas. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Biff. Oh, yeah. Marty looks and reacts with horror. At another table, Biff is trying to put his hands on Lorraine. She's trying to push him away. Oh, quit buying me, Biff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Mother. I mean, Lorraine. You want it. You know you want it. Oh, fairies want it. And you know you want me to give it to you, fairies. Oh, I'm not that kind of girl. <laughs> Dude, you are. You just don't know it yet. Get your hands off me! Can you give it to me? Yes, Andrew, get your hands off her. He turns to find himself facing Maddie. Put it to you, dipshit Timmy Turner! <laughs> Strickland approaches from behind Marty. Biff sees him and plays it cool. Duh, crap fairies. Duh. Since you're new here, I'll give you a break. Today. But if you don't shape up, 
Then I'm shipping you out. Biff walks off. Lorraine looks at Maddie and sighs with an infatuation. Oh, Yeah, I thought so too. I mean, you're welcome. Let's see. All right, we're doing good. We didn't get thrown out, and there's only one more scene to go. All right. We're going to let uh, the crowd and the folks up here decide what to do because this one's up for grabs. We have Marty, we have Dark Brown and Old Dark Brown, George and the narrator. Who wants to be Marty? Wow, you guys really suck. <laughs> Scream! What do you want? The professor. We haven't heard the professor yet. All right, Marty is the professor. Uh, Doc Brown. Harley Quinn. Shatner. Harley Quinn. <laughs> Do you see a girl on this stage? Here? It's just character reasons. Shatner. Yeah. You want Shatner? Yeah. Which one is it? Um. George. George. Okay. All right. So Shatner is going to be George. All right. Who do you want Carlos to do? You want Rocco back again? Winslow? All right, Winslow is going... Okay, now we got to decide. Does Winslow play Doc Brown or the narrator? Narrator! Narrator! Narrator it is, so you are the narrator. Winslow's the narrator. Started at 78A. Hold on, though. And we have Quentin for Doc Brown. Reno! Spongebob Squarepants. Squarepants. <laughs> All I heard from up front here was Reno. Reno! Oh, Reno 911, you mean Garcia? <laughs> Last chance, folks. Who do you want Quentin to be? Oh my god, I don't know. Hey. Hey. Murphy's the Martian! Hey. Marvin the Martian? Oh my. I left my dematerializing ray gun at home. Turn Austin Powers? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Jesus, you guys are so indecisive. We gotta move on. Christopher Walken. Yeah. There we go. Doc Brown is Christopher Walken. All right, now we got all our parts and pieces. We're gonna start. Right? No. All right. Hey, you pricks. Interior Brown's living room day. <laughs> Marty's on the phone. What do you mean she's not your type? <laughs> Destiny, George. You and Lorraine are meant for each other. <laughs> oh, fuff. Look, I'll give you twenty dollars if you take her to that dance. Twenty whole dollars. Okay, George, I'll see you tomorrow. Uh, Marty hangs up and says, ready. He pulls out the snapshot again, prick. <laughs> And that's all that's left of Dave are his feet. Da 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 yada yada interior Brown's garage day. Brown is fiddling with a video camera playing the end section on a mail tape over his TV set. Brown seems particularly curious about what happens at the end. Why it cuts off so abruptly. Marty enters as the tape reaches the end. On an old TV, old Brown reacts to the dog barking. Wow, what is it, a uh, hiney? Oh no, they found me. I don't know how. The tape ends abruptly. Marty reacts with pain, remembering what followed. You say, Doc? Ooh. <laughs> Brown quite surprised that Marty's been watching. Oh, hi, kid. You caught me <laughs> doing something inappropriate. <laughs> Fascinating device, this camera. I can't believe it's made. In Japan. <laughs> Doc, there's something I haven't told you about. What happens <clears throat> on the night we make that tape? Hold it right there, kid. You don't tell me anything. <laughs> I don't want to take any more chances or shit. <laughs> I don't want to screw up the GD space time continuum. No man or woman should know much about his or her own destiny. 
If I know too much about the future, I could endanger my own existence. Besides, I've always hated fortune tellers. <laughs> and speaking of endangered species, how did it go today with your pop? Terrible. He just doesn't want to go out with my mom. I think he only goes out with girls because he's supposed to. <laughs> I tried everything. I reasoned with him, begged him, pleaded with him, yelled at him. I even tried bribing him. The only thing I haven't tried is scaring him. Marty stopped short. He's getting an idea, see? Cut to exterior George's house night. All is quiet. The house is dark. Interior George's bedroom. They're all sleeping soundly, see? Now pair of club hands places his featherweight headphones on George's ears. The hands now insert a cassette tape labeled Van Halen into a Walkman. A figure dials the volume now level to 10, then presses play. George awakens screaming, you prick! He opens his eyes and reacts in further terror. He sees a frightening yellow monster. Marty, in full radiation suit at the foot of the bed. <sighs> Marty turns off the music. When he, when he talks, his voice is distorted through the mouth filter in the hood, like Bane. An open window <laughs> and Marty got in. Silence, Earthling! <laughs> and who are you? <laughs> My name is Professor Darth Vader. <laughs> I am an extraterrestrial from the planet Vulcan. Vulcan? When have I heard that before? <laughs> I must be dreaming. <laughs> this is no dream. You're having a close encounter of the third kind. You have reached the outer limits of the twilight zone. Mom. Dad. George throws out the compass, but Marty pulls the portable hairdryer out of his belt like a gun. He fires a blast of heat at George. Silence! My heat ray will vaporize you if you do not... Obey me. George freezes his hands and surrender, the pussy. Oh, right, right. I'll surrender. Turn it off. Turn it off. Marty lowers it. Now his digital watch alarm begins beeping. Marty raises his wrist as if it were a radio. Silence! I'm receiving a transmission from the Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> you, George McFly, have created a riff in the time-space continuum. The Supreme Klingon hereby commands you to take the female uh, female Earth program program person called Baines Lorraine to the location known to you as Hill Valley High. And it's a high school. It's high school! Exactly four Earth cycles from now. Saturday night in your language. You mean take Lorraine to the dance? Affirmative. But I don't know if I'll be able to. Marty turns on the Walkman again. George screams like a girl. Turn it off, please. Turn it off. Marty turns it off. Insolent Earthling, do you wish me to melt your brain? No, oh, please. I'm sorry. I'll do it. I'll take her to the dance. But please, don't turn that noise on again. <laughs> Very good, Earthling. You will tell no one of this visit. Now, close your eyes and see me no more. No more. Affirmative. 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 And scene. <laughs> All right, folks, big round of applause for the folks. Come see us at our booth. I'll be at booth 226. You can catch my act at the Dunkin' Donuts at 2 a.m. Folks, they are going to take a short break. They'll be downstairs for autographs, signatures, pictures, whatever you want, pretty much.